This is Nick's turn. For over two decades, Nicholas Yaris has been living a nightmare inside of a nightmare. It is surely nightmare enough to live on death row. Another world of the Dan, where one is locked in a cell for 22 hours a day, 48 hours on weekends. There are, in fact, worse things. Imagine being thought a rapist and a murderer. What if one were innocent? For over 20 years, Nick has been insisting on his innocence, but few folks care to listen. For the last 10 years, he has fought for DNA testing, but the test came back marked inconclusive. That is, until now. Recently, Garris's federal lawyers filed a motion in his pending habeas corpus proceedings. According to the motion filed by Assistant Federal Defender Christina Swarns, quote, One thing is now clear. Mr. Yaris should not be required to spend another moment behind bars, much less on death row. He is innocent of this offense and should be freed, she wrote. His lawyers wrote those words because they recently received the results of his latest DNA test performed by a DNA expert of national renown, Edward Blake of Forensic Science Associates in Richmond, California. The test researched three samples from the murder-rape victim, a 32-year-old mother named Linda May Craig. The test involved sperm taken from her body, skin from under her fingernails, and evidence retrieved from a glove that DA said the rapist used during the attack. None of the evidence matched. Since 1981, the prosecutors have claimed that Yaris gave a jailhouse confession. That evidence, too, seems as worthless as the physical evidence. Yet the DAs in Delaware County are unwilling or unable to let Nick go. They've announced that they will fight his release. In an incredible statement, DA G. Michael Green claimed, quote, DNA testing results in and of themselves do not establish Yaris' innocence, nor do these results indicate a wrongful conviction, unquote. Not surprisingly, Yaris remains under the harrowing conditions of death row. It is up to a judge again. For 21 years, every judge he has gone in front of has essentially echoed the DA's arguments that it was he who raped and murdered the victim in December 1981. They have claimed that he did so because the decedent bore a remarkable resemblance to an old girlfriend of his, who he was angry at. They claimed the jailhouse confession given by a silly, drug-addled youth. Now, in the face of DNA evidence that conclusively proves he did not rape or kill her, the DA announced essentially DNA is irrelevant. Of such chimera is the American death penalty machine constructed. A jailhouse lawyer here on death row pointed to another reason that proved his innocence, and while not scientific like DNA, it had the irresistible pull of logic. He argued quite convincingly that Yaris, from its earliest youth, was a notorious thief. He boasts a long string of such offenses on his record. Yet the victim's body, when she was found, had every bit of jewelry on her finger and around her neck intact. A thief would have been compelled to take it. Makes sense to me. Meanwhile, Nick Yaris longs for an end to his 21-year nightmare. May it not be long in coming. From death row, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are produced by Noel Hanrahan for Prison Radio.